as x approaches 0 from the right, the squared of x cosine pi over x, this approaches 0, and this is undefined. So therefore, we start with cosine uh, pi over x as being a bounded function, we say. And we will multiply all three sides by the squared of x, which is not 0 and positive, of course. Negative the squared of x less than or equal to the squared of x, cosine pi over x less than or equal to the squared of x. So that's the first hypothesis. We show that this function is squeezed between two functions. And the second step is I have to show that the limit of negative x squared of x when xx approaches 0 from the right and limit of g of x, which is the squared of x as x approaches 0 from the right, they both exist and they are the same. And then I, I draw a conclusion. Very good. This, is, this should be just 20 seconds problem. So what is the limit from the right of 0 when x approaches 0 from the right of negative the square of x? How much? Of course. And how much is the limit of the square of x when x approaches 0 from the right? Good. From 1 and 2, by squeeze theorem, what we conclude about the limit of the square of x from cosine pi over x as x approaches 0 from the right? Of course. Very good. Well done. Next question. Next question. Um, yes? I don't think we, uh, I mean, I wouldn't have to be from 2 for 2, but I'm wondering why it specifically says that x is equal to omega 3. That's the name of the function. You cannot plug in. It's undefined. When x is negative 3, the function is undefined. Right? The domain is 0. Uh, the denominator is 0. Right? The function will not exist if x is negative 3. Is that clear? It's a number over 0. I just said it might be really used that when you're working. You're, um, you're not using it, but it's, it's something that we have to write. If it's undefined there, the derivative will not exist there as well. Yes. Very good. Next question. Is there anything else you would like to work on? Uh, um, yes. The epsilon delta. Very good. Where is it? Number 11. Number 11. Very good. Number 11. So let's work on that. And we have limit as x approaches 1 from 1 minus 3x divided by 2 equals negative 1. First of all, let's I make sure that this is true and there is no error in there. Because you're trying that we're trying to prove something that is incorrect from the get-go. So is it true? Is it? Good, correct, very good. So then this is equivalent to saying for every epsilon greater than a zero, we will find a delta positive such that x minus, very good, less than, very good. This will imply 1 minus 3x over 2 
Very good. Minus negative 1. Awesome, Ella. Well done. Oops, I meant to write epsilon. Yes. Great job. Perfect. Thank you. Where do we start? Correct, right here. And what do we want to obtain? This is what we want to obtain. This is our target. If I process this as, this inequality as much as possible and I get something like this with the absolute value x minus 1, then this quantity on the right-hand side will be delta. But I have to have it clean absolute value of x minus 1 on the left. Good, first step. Very good. Good, which is 2. So this one needs to be multiplied by 2. So we have 1 minus 3x plus 2. Perfect. Next step. Right, so this is negative 3x plus 3 divided by 2 in absolute value. What is the next step? Yes, so I have negative 3 and x minus 1 in absolute value at the top over the absolute value of 2 less than 3. We use the property of absolute value, the absolute value of the top over the absolute value of the denominator. So now I write the absolute value of negative 3, the absolute value of x minus 1, the absolute value of, oops, I meant to write 2, and less than epsilon. Next step, please. Right, so negative, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, the absolute value of x minus 1, the absolute value of 2 is 2, less than epsilon. Final step, I have x minus 1 on the left. And what should I do to both sides to get that x minus 1? Multiply both sides by? Very good. So 2 epsilon over 3, and what will this be? That's it. Well done. So then in step 2, you only have to write, now show that delta equals 2 epsilon over 3 works by reversing the steps. From above. You do not have to do anything else. By showing, by writing that, you're telling me that you know that it's a double equivalency. From left, we can get the right, and from right, starting point on the right, we can get the left. That's all. I don't want you to repeat anything. I don't want you to write anything else. That's good enough for me. Good. Very good. Anything else that you would like to go back to? Number 10, let's take a look at number 10. Good. In number 10, we have um, limit as x approaches infinity from the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 1 minus x. This was an old test. I don't remember doing a problem like this with you. It's not a big deal, really, but I don't remember doing a problem like this. So, when I write the test, which is probably going to be tonight or tomorrow, um, I will look at what I did in class, of course. Well, when you plug in infinity, because you have to, you get infinity here and then minus. Correct. So let's review. We know 0 over 0. Step 2, the second one. We know infinity over infinity. And here's the third indeterminate case. Why are they called indeterminate case? They are no, we have no idea what they, we will come up with. No guess. No one has any idea. Indeterminate. The result can be anything. Cases. There are a total of seven. 
we looked at three. Okay, so I can conclude. So then what can I do? And the only thing I can do is what we've been doing all along with these cases. But I don't remember showing a problem like this in class. So what do you recommend? The only thing that we can do here. Rationalize it. There is no other way. There is nothing else I can do. Thank you, Kyle. Of course, there is nothing else. You can't take anything out. You cannot put anything in. You can touch the square root, right? There is nothing we can do. Perfect. So now, keeping that in mind, can anyone give us the next step? So limit, don't forget the limit as x approaches infinity. The denominator is very clear. Before writing it again, I should have factored out inside x squared, but that's okay. We'll do it in a minute. But can anyone give us the top? Yes, x squared plus 4x plus 1. Excellent. These two go away. Great job. And of course, I have to dig deep under the square root by factoring out what? And of course, in the numerator, I factor out the, the uh, degree. But now, what do I factor out under the square root? What is the degree under the square root? So I have to factor out x squared. What is left? There is a 1 plus 4 over x plus 1 over x squared. Would you agree with that step? Yes? Is this OK? Everyone? Is it? Good. Now I have to ask myself this. The square of x squared, remember, is the absolute value of x. But since x approaches infinity, what do I replace it with? Plain? Plain, simple? X. x. Great job. So this is limit. As x approaches infinity, x. 4 plus 1 over x, x, the square root, 1 plus 4 over x, plus 1 over x squared, and plus x. Now look at the denominator and look at the numerator and say, yes, now you have to, and I'll do it. I have to do what? Simply factor out x, yeah. Only now I can drop the limit operator because I, re I reach the final step. Where does the numerator go? The numerator goes to 4. Very good. Where does the denominator go? Because this approach is 0, this approach is 0, this approach is 0. So the numerator approaches 4. And the denominator approaches 2. So then this is 2. y equals 2. Horizontal asymptote at positive infinity only. For sure. We have not checked what happens at the other end. Any questions on this problem? Any questions, please? It's basically a combination of rationalizing and what we've been doing by factoring out and simplifying. And we had something similar, but not exactly. I don't remember showing an example. I did go with this one. Good. Um, do we need to look at part B? Yeah. Okay, let's look at part B. So limit, bless you, as x approaches infinity, 1 minus e to the x over 1 plus 2 e to the x. 
Like before, we have to identify what it is and what is it. And the answer is well, it's infinity over infinity for sure. This goes to infinity. This one goes to infinity. So it's infinity over infinity. Okay. So if that's the case, what I would do is I would factor out. We're not talking about polynomials here, so I can't say what is the highest, what is the degree of the top. But I see that if I factor out e to the x from both, I will be able to simplify it. So if I factor out e to the x, what is left from the top? 1 over e to the x minus, excellent. What about the denominator? Still 1 over e to the x, but this time plus, plus 2. Of course I will simplify these two. And I will ask myself, only when x approaches infinity, where does this go? Where does this go? 1 over huge. Yes. So now I drop the limit operator. And what is the limit? Negative 1 half y equals negative one-half horizontal asymptote at infinity. Any questions on this? Please let me know when you're ready to choose the next one. function do not grab the derivative, it's a derivative, but find the intervals on which the derivative is negative, positive, and zero. Right? So remember we graphed something like this, um, and when the function is increasing, the derivative has to be positive. When the function is decreasing, the derivative has to be negative. When the function has a max or a min, the derivative has to be 0. So it's 0 at 5 and 15. So mm -hmm. f prime of x is 0 at x equals 5 and x equals 15. f prime of x is positive on the interval 0 to 5 union 15 to 20. And it's less than 0 between 5 and 15. When the function is increasing, the derivative is positive. When the function is decreasing, the derivative is negative.
Any questions on this problem? Okay. What else would you would like to go back to? I'm sorry? Five part. Five part. D is in dog? Yes. Very good. So in five part D, we have limit as t approaches zero from one over t minus one over t times t plus one. Okay. So first I plug it in and I cannot even say anything because I it's completely undefined. Both functions are undefined. Can I separate and say limit of this minus limit of the second fraction? Can I say limit of this minus limit of this? Why not? Why we are not allowed to do that? Because remember, if the limits of these two functions don't exist and are not a number, you cannot separate. The limit of this is d and e. The limit of this is d and e. You can't separate them. So then, if we cannot do that, we cannot apply limit law, then what can I do? What do you think? Say it again. The, the, the least common denominator. I have to subtract these two. What is the least common denominator? Right, thank you very much. And then this one needs a t plus 1. The other one doesn't need anything. So then t plus 1 minus 1. These two go away. I see it's 0 over 0 now. So then I have limit as t approaches 0, t over t times t plus 1. The problem goes away very easily. And the final simplified form, where does the, the top go? Good. Where does the denominator go? Good. So then the limit is? Good. And we started with something that we didn't even think we could find. Yes. Any questions on this problem? Any questions, please? OK, so we have limit. As x approaches 0 from the right, we had several similar examples to this. Where do we start? What is the starting point in this case? Of course, from the inner function, because I don't know what I don't even know what the situation is here. From the inner function, zero from the right, you remember the graph of one over x. Where does this go? Careful. If this goes to infinity, I would say yes. But since x approaches zero from the right, it cannot be zero. Just picture the graph. You just have to picture the graph of 1 over x. Very good, positive infinity. So now we are really discussing arctangent of infinity. And again, you have to picture the graph. We graphed it several times. Please remember these graphs. They are very important. So this is arc tangent x. We had this example a couple of times already. So what is the answer? Very good. Indeed positive. Very good. Next question, please.
I'm ready when you are. Number nine. Right, so this is f of x. This is very similar to what we looked at last time. So we have x minus 1 and x minus 2 after we factor. And uh, we immediately state uh, two restrictions that x does not equal 1 and x does not equal 2. But after that, we can simplify, and the simplified form is this. Since the factor, remember what we said about the factor that goes away? What does this represent? Very good, a hole in the graph. What does this represent since the factor stays? Very good, a vertical asymptote. Awesome. So um, limit as x approaches 2 from the left of 1 over x minus 2. Limit as x approaches 2 from the right of 1 over x minus 2. And of course, limit as x approaches 1 from the left of 1 over x minus 2. And limit as x approaches 1 from the right from 1 over x minus 2. So now let's find the answers to this, these limits. And then finally, we are going to determine the limit of 1 over x minus 2 when x approaches infinity. So it's not sufficient to say this is a vertical asymptote, this is a hole. Uh, we also have to determine the limits left and right. So uh, as x approaches 2 from the left, which means 1.9, I know the answer has to be infinity. There is no question. It's 1 over 0. All of them are 1 over 0, uh, except for the hole, of course. But they're all 1 over 0. So uh, before we do that. So these two are 1 over 0. These two will not be 1 over 0. So uh, 2 from the left is 1.9, so this will be negative infinity. 2 from the right is 2.1, so this will be positive infinity. But this, when you plug in 1, either from the left or from the right, it doesn't matter. The answer is negative 1. So the whole will be 1 comma negative 1. 1 for x, negative 1 for y. And here this is 0, obviously, so y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. Because when the denominator goes to infinity, 1 over 0 approaches 0, and the horizontal asymptote is 0. And it is on both sides. It's a rational function. It doesn't create any situations. Questions? Any questions, please? Good. Anything else? Is there anything else you would like to go back to? Is there any type of problem that you can, you would say, well, I need to see another one because I'm not so sure, or I just want to see another one? 5C. 5C. Of course. Well, let's look at 5C. Uh, so we have a limit as x approaches 2 from, the, from either side. 2 minus x divided by the absolute value of 2 minus x. Um, I think it's right here. Okay, so we have to start with the absolute value of 2 minus x. I will ask you to simplify fully before you determine the limit. And you will have two options, 2 minus x, 2 minus x, greater equal to 0, negative 2 minus x, 2 minus x less than 0. You have to start by simplifying the absolute value first. Any questions on this so far?
Any questions so far? Okay, so then I'll try to. Um, first of all, I would I need to to solve this inequality, and I move x, and x is less than or equal to two. I refuse to solve this one because I may make an error. If this one is less than or equal to two, this must be the other side. And now, 2 minus x divided by the absolute value of 2 minus x gives us also two options. Because the denominator has two options, the numerator, the whole thing will have two options. So, What is the first option? Can anyone tell us what will be the first option? The first option is this over this. This, what is the answer? One. For x only strictly less than two, because now this is in the denominator. The second option is when the top is two minus x and the denominator is negative two minus x, what will this answer be? with a denominator of negative 2 minus x instead of this. Two minus, negative 2 minus x. So the top is 2 minus x. Yes. You simplify and you get negative 1. Do we all see that? Okay, for x greater than 2. Finally, since this limit is from either side, I have to calculate both sides, both limits. Both sided limit, two sided limits, right? So I have to find limit as x approaches 2 from the right, and limit as x approaches 2 from the left. 2 from the right from what? Two from the right from which of these two? Very good. And two from the left, from which of these two? I know it's silly. Yes. So the right, this limit is? Good. And this limit is? Good. So then what do we conclude finally about this limit? Very good. <coughs> yes, that's true. It does not exist. The left limit is one thing, and the right limit is a different thing. Very good. Anything else? The problems that you may have questions on may not be here. So you may still say, I want to see a problem like this. Yes. You wanted to say something? Bella? No. Okay. Next question. Anyone? Any questions? Which one? Number two. Number two. Okay, so here we are asked to find the derivative of the function using the definition of the derivative. And there is only one definition. Here you have no choice, right? You can't use... Uh, so let me caution you um, something. If you have, for example, this limit on the test on Wednesday, and you plug in numbers, and you come up with three, Let's assume the, the correct answer is 3. And you just plug in numbers and you get 3 and you don't show any work, you can't get any credit. So using the calculator to just determine the limit will not bring any credit. You can check with the calculator after you perform all the operations that we showed as we showed every day in class. Uh, yes, fine. You can use a calculator. You are allowed to and you can check. But without this work, you can't get any credit. So please remember that. Everyone can punch in numbers in the graphing calculator. 
And I'm not testing that. I'm testing your understanding of what we're doing and the algebra as well. Okay, please. So we are given a function which is 4x plus 1 divided by x plus 3. And we're asked to find f prime of x. And if you remember, there is only one definition, which is this. The limit of the difference quotient. There is no other definition for f prime of x. So, in that case, what do we do? Can anyone dictate? Please do not drop the limit operator till the very last step. What would you write? Yes, 4x plus 4h plus 1 over x plus h plus 3 minus 4x plus 1 over x plus 3 divided by h. What will be the next step? Of course, you have to find the least common denominator. Let's find the least common denominator. Which is? Very good, awesome. So x plus 3, x plus h plus 3. Now be very careful because you need the adjustments for the tops. This, the top of this needs what it does not have. And the top of this needs what it does not have, which is x plus h plus 3, the factor that it does not have in the denominator. Now be very careful how you multiply. And always remember that since this is basically the difference quotient, right? That's what it is, the limit of the difference quotient. Two things must happen for any difference quotient for any function. What is the first thing? That's the correct order. The first thing that has to happen is everything that does not have H in it must simplify, must cancel. And what is the second thing that has to happen always? The h from the denominator must cancel out with an h from the top. Otherwise, we can't get the answer. And we know there, there is one. OK, so now please dictate. I recommend distribute x to these th three terms and then 3 to these three terms. So 4x squared plus 4xh plus x plus 12x plus 12h plus 3. Now be very careful because I have a negative in front. Everything will be negative. They're all terms are positive, so everything will be negative. So minus 4x squared minus 4xh and minus 12x and minus x minus h minus 3. If not all terms without h, if they don't go away, I know something is terribly wrong and I have to go back to the drawing board. That's why I'm emphasizing these things. So you know where the mistakes may come from. Negative x, 4x squared with positive, uh, positive with negative 4xh. As you see, even a term with h in it, in it disappeared. I'm happy. Uh, you know, what can I say? But it's a bonus. Okay, these two go away. Um, these two go away. These two go away. And what I'm left is with is 12h minus h, which is 11. So this is limit as age approaches 0, 11h. I flipped this already. x plus 3, x plus h plus 3. These go away. And now, and only now, I can drop the limit operator. And of course, I'm expecting a function. It better be a function, not a number. It's f prime of x. So the answer is the top goes to 11, and the denominator goes to? squared. Remember, do not waste your time. It would actually be a total waste of time to distribute, to, uh, to uh, expand the denominator. Do not do that.
Good. Any questions? Six. I'm sorry? Six. A six, you said? Four, three, four, five, six. <laughs> yes. Use the intermediate value theorem to show. Um, okay. So we have 2x cubed minus 8x squared minus 7 equals 0. So I denote this by function f of x. And I know is continuous everywhere from negative infinity to infinity. I will have to use the graphing calculator. And hopefully I, I will not have to look hard and long to determine an interval, a one unit length interval or shorter, but one unit is good. So um, let me go back and check this because as I said this, Uh, y equals, we have 2x cubed, and then minus 8x squared, and then minus 8, I'm sorry, minus 7. <coughs> and then second table, and I'm going to start with numbers uh, close to 0, left and right, like, I don't know, negative 1, negative 2, I should go the other way. Zero, okay, it's promising. Zero, okay, two, three, um, negative two, um, ten. Okay, and let's say eight. Okay, let's say seven. Uh, let's say five. Let's say four. Ah, so obviously between four and five. Seven five. Say it again. Let me go back up. Okay, so four and five. It's frozen now. Okay, so between four and five, I found the solution. The function is continuous everywhere. So I have um, between 4 and 5, there exists a solution, at least one, guaranteed. So f of 4 is positive, f of 5 is negative. By the intermediate value theorem, there exists c in the interval 4, 5, such that f of c is 0. The intermediate value theorem does not tell us what it is. It guarantees at least one solution. Good. Next question, please. Anything else? So you can use any number from the question is negative and positive? And that's the theorem. The theorem says that if a function is continuous on an interval and you change its sign, it has to go through zero. So if a function is continuous and on a one unit length interval, we prefer one unit length, it can be smaller. Um, if it changes sign, there must be a solution or an x-intercept there. It cannot, if it's continuous, you cannot go from negative to positive without passing through zero or vice versa. Good. Anything else? Anything else? Number eight. Yes, number eight. Find the equation of the tangent line to the curve y equals at very good. So what do I have to do to determine the slope of um, for the equation of a tangent line? So I have y equals the square root of x minus two. And it's 11, comma 3. If I plug in 11, 11 minus 2 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. That's correct. Okay, so then I need y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, in which x1 is 11 and y1 is 3. The question is, how do I find the slope of the tangent line at that point? Anyone has any idea? 
see it again, Tom? The value of the derivative of 11. Exactly. So I have to find here f prime of 11. How do I find f prime of 11? I have several options, basically three options. One of them would be to find f prime of a with any of the definitions. The second and the third option would be to find f prime of x with the only definition we have for f prime of x and just plug in 11 at the end. Now you tell me what you would like. And that's how we, we will proceed. And I was logged out. I just wanted to take a 10 minutes. Yes. Felix is here. Matt. Yes. Paul is here. Chris is here. Wilson is here. Playing with his cell phone. I see. Elizabeth is here. Ella is here. Sean is here. And someone is here. Kyle is here. Quinn is here. Zizio is here. Good. Everyone is here. Perfect. So, um, how would you like to proceed? Of x or a? Of a. Very good. So f prime of 11, which of the two definitions? Remember, we have the limit as age approaches 0, and the other one is the limit as x approaches 11. For this particular function, I don't think it's going to make any difference. Which one? Okay, perfect. So we, we chose to use this definition. So this is limit as x approaches 11, x minus 11 in the denominator, <coughs> f of x minus f of 11. <coughs> Very good. So this will be limit as x approaches 11, f of x is the square root of x minus 2 minus, <coughs> we know the value of f of 11 is 3. Of course, when you plug in 11, what do you, th what do you think we are going to get? Of course, for sure. Over? Of course. So then what is our next step? For sure, also, we have no other. Say it again. Of course. The square root of x minus 2 plus 3, the square root of x minus 2 plus 3. <coughs> I have a tickle. With your permission, I'll get a cough drop in a second. Very good. So this is limit. 6 approaches 11. x minus 2 minus 9 over uh, x minus 11 the square of x minus 2 plus 3. What do you think the problem is? What do we get? Why do we get 0 over 0? Because there must be a factor of x minus 11. And here it is. The top is x minus 11. The bottom is x minus 11. And the answer is 1 over <coughs> 1 over um, so 11 minus 2 is 9, square of 9 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, so 1 over 6. Any questions? Any questions, please? Is this clear? Yes? Say it again. Just use chain rule next time. Right. Not yet. <laughs> Anything else here? Anything else? You can check, though. Which one? Number eight. We just did number eight. Uh, yes, this was number eight. So we determined one over six. Yes, we didn't finish. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So now this is one over six. So then we have y minus three equals one sixth x minus eleven. Thank you, Ella. Thank you. 
I don't have to think too much. I know I'm not going to get away with anything in this class. So, so y equals 1, 6x minus 11 over 6 and plus 3. 18 minus 11 is 7. So y equals 1, 6x plus 7 over 6. Thank you.